and welcome to my channel, Joyce's Affordable Glam Life 360 or just Joyce. I'm on here for Get Ready With Me Unsolved Mystery Thursday. So if you would like to hear about the Pollock Twins reincarnation, then keep on watching. So this Unsolved Mystery is an unsolved mystery, but also uh, does this story prove a reincarnation? So this story is the Pollock sisters reincarnation. If you haven't heard of it, this really did intrigue me. I really felt like I wanted to tell this story on here because it was just fascinating, especially with reincarnation. So I want to start with the fact that 24% of Americans believe, they believe in reincarnation. Now, scientists shoot down that reincarnation even exists. They don't believe it exists. But there is sometimes un, an unsolved mystery of reincarnation that scientists just cannot explain. They just don't know what happened and they are perplexed by this phenomenon or actual reincarnation. So we're going to start with the Pollock sisters. Um, and I, I believe that they are pretty well known. Um, if you haven't heard of it, stick around. You might find it fascinating just like I did. And if you have heard of it and, you know, don't want to listen to it, that's okay too. You might want to stick around and watch me put on my makeup. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's um, dive in to this very intriguing story. The father of the twins, um, John Pollock, and he was born in Bristol, England in 1920. Um, he was raised in the Church of England before he converted to Catholicism. Now, Florence Pollock, who is the mother to the twins, she grew up as a member of the Salvation Army. And she became um, Catholic when she married John. And despite um, John being Catholic, because I am Catholic, um, and I was raised Catholic, and um, Catholics don't believe there is reincarnation. So despite John being Catholic, he, he believed in reincarnation. Um, and especially after he read about about it in a novel, he really then really felt that reincarnation existed. On a side note, I am still having issues with my cheeks, so I apologize. Um, they are just not, I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have scarring from what happened with the bumps or what have you. I'm hoping not, but I've been, <laughs> I've been kind of upset with my cheeks having these marks, but I try to cover them up as best as I can with makeup. John um, would say in interviews later on that at night he would, that's not the brush I'm looking for, that at night he would pray to God for evidence of reincarnation, proving that he was right and the priests, the Catholic priests, were wrong. Uh, John and Florence left the church in the 60s. John believed in reincarnation, but Florence did not. She um, she didn't want nothing to do with it. Joanna Pollock, born in 1946, was the couple's third was the couple's third child and first daughter. So there were two boys um, born uh, before Joanna was born. 1951, following the family moving to Hexham in North Thumberland. Their second daughter, Jacqueline, was born. And during this time, John and Florence were really preoccupied with their grocery and milk delivery service. So most of the time, the girls, Joanna and Jacqueline, were being raised by their maternal grandmother. Um, and the girls, Joanna and Jacqueline, were very, very close to each other. Um, and Joanna, I think because she was the older one, she kind of 
kind of would um, mother Jacqueline and Jacqueline accepted that. She didn't, she didn't mind Joanna kind of mothering her probably because she is the younger one. And you know, that's just what siblings do, right? <laughs> Joanna, she liked wearing costumes and acting in plays and she made up, um, that she would make up. So she would make up plays and she would dress up and she enjoyed doing that. Now, um, Jacqueline um, is said, well, no, I, excuse me, Joanna was generous and shared freely with the other children. Both girls, it says, like to comb, comb hair and they really enjoyed combing their father's hair the most. That was probably the most they enjoyed, maybe because that was like the quality time with their father um, because he was so busy uh, with his own business, with the grocery um, uh, milk delivery uh, business. So the times that they were able to uh, comb his hair and stuff was that precious, you know, time with their dad. Joanna had a premonition when she was little that she wouldn't grow up. And she would often say, I will never be a lady. And at age three, um, Jacqueline, so that's the younger one, she she fell in a bucket. And it was by accident. No, nothing, it wasn't on purpose or anything like that. Um, but it was by accident. And it caused a small gash on her forehead over her, her right eye um, near the root of her nose. I guess so it would probably be like right around it formed here. a permanent scar that was slightly depressed and was especially visible in cold weather I mean I've seen that happen before like some scarring I mean I have scarring uh um and I notice it more in the cold in the colder weather Jacqueline had a roundish they call it a roundish dark birthmark on the left side of her waist in May of 1957, Joanna was 11 and Jacqueline was six. On the morning of May 7th, they were struck by a car and they were killed while walking to church with a friend. The driver was a local woman who was forced to be separated from her children. And so she, uh, she decided she was gonna commit suicide. So she took um, aspirin and they called it phenyl Barbatone. So she thought she was going to commit suicide and be gone anyway. So she decided to drive her car and she struck the girls and killed them. Um, there are witnesses that said they saw her driving erratically and bearing down on Joanna and Jacqueline, but there was nowhere for the girls to go. Um, and the reason why they said there was nowhere for the girls to go was because of the there was a wall on the other side of the sidewalk. And so, this is sad. The impact tossed them into the air and the girls were just killed instantly. Um, and I guess this incident made headlines all across Britain. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it did. How could it not? Uh, such a big story about and during that time and these two precious little girls. I mean, I could, I, I kind of can see it, you know. I'm going to use uh, Profusion Love Struck. Uh, this came out uh, in February and I was, I was able to pick it up. So for $13.99, it's a pretty good deal. Lawrence and John were devastated. Obviously, their girls, you know, were killed in a crazy car accident. I mean, who would expect that, right? Um, and so Florence tried not to think about the girls. She didn't want, she, she just didn't want to think about them. It was too, um, it was too hard, uh, for her to, to think about them. And it just devastated her so much and made her just so, so upset that she chose to avoid, avoid it at all costs. Now, John, he preferred to keep them in his thoughts. The day of the accident, um, he experienced a vision of the girls in heaven. Sensed the presence of their spirits in a top room of the house. 
and he would go there and spend um, a lot of time there to be close uh, close to them. And John would later say he felt the girls' deaths had been a punishment from God for having prayed for proof of reincarnation. He also um, felt that his prayers would be answered and the girls would be reborn into the family. So he thought that it's okay because one day they'll be back. Um, and that's, that's probably how he kept himself going too. He disagreed with this and really wanted nothing to do with John and his uh, thinking that they were going to be reborn and reincarnated to the extent that it almost, it almost broke them apart. You know, um, she almost left him because she couldn't handle the reincarnation and believing what he believed. But Florence became pregnant um, soon after this. And John was convinced that, that the girls were going to be reincarnated. He believed they were going to be reincarnated as twins. Florence rejected John's belief um, because Florence's doctor predicted a single birth. So the doctor even didn't believe that, didn't think they were going to be twins. And he, he based it on the pel palpation and fetal heartbeat. There was no um, history of twins in the family. And um, he, only he only heard one heartbeat. Um, and so, uh, since there were no, there, since also there was no, um, history of twins in either Florence or John's family, it just seemed far-fetched. But on October 4th, 1954, Florence gave birth to twin girls and the girls were named Jillian and Jennifer. And Jennifer had a birthmark that looked like Jacqueline's scar and a second birthmark in the same place as Jacqueline's birthmark which kind of seems you know coincidental maybe I don't know Jillian and Jennifer would make several statements and recognitions relating to Joanna and Jacqueline um, between the ages of three and seven so they would say things that only uh, Joanna and Jacqueline would know. When the twins were three, Florence and John brought out toys that had belonged to Joanna and Jacqueline. Um, these toys had been boxed and stored in the attic and Jillian claimed the doll that belonged um, to Joanna, she claimed, or claimed the one that belonged to Jacqueline. Uh, both the girls said the dolls had been gifts from Santa Claus as they had been for Joanna and Jacqueline. When Jillian saw a toy clothes ringer that had also been a Santa Claus present to Joanna, Joanna said, there is my toy ringer. She also said that Santa brought, brought it. Jillian and Jennifer did not argue about the possession of the toys of who, who got what, which, you know, kind of happens a lot with young Children. Florence would sometimes overhear Jillian and J Jennifer discussing the details of the car accident. And she would say that once she came across the girls and Jillian was cradling Jennifer's head saying the blood, quote, the blood's coming out of your eyes. That, and that's where the car hit you, unquote. Jack, John recalled that when he identified the bodies, Jacqueline's head was bandaged above the eyes. Jillian once pointed to Jennifer's forehead birthmark and said, that is the mark, that is the mark Jennifer got when she fell on a bucket. So remember the story of the accident falling on the bucket and it left a scar right on the forehead. When she would uh, deliver milk and groceries and such, she wore a smock. She would wear the smock, but she stopped working um, shortly after the girls uh Joanna and Jacqueline died. She stopped working. And one time John uh, was going to be painting and he put on Florence's smock. And so Jennifer asked him, why are you wearing mom mummy's uh, coat? Because it's Britain. So mummy, I guess, is the, the way they say it. Um, and she was annoyed at Jillian because she did not recognize it but she wouldn't have recognized it because the older sister would have been in school. 
so she wouldn't have seen it. And then John asked Jennifer how she knew her mom wore the smock. And Jennifer said her mother had worn it while delivering milk, which how would she know that, right? The Pollocks moved away from Hexham when the twins were nine months old. And when the kids were four, the family visited Hexham again for the first time. As they walked toward the park, and Jillian and Jennifer said they wanted to go across the road to the park and the swings. They knew the way when the girls, uh, they knew the way, which how would they know the way? They didn't live there. Um, so how did they know? Because the park wasn't even in sight. Um, one, one time the girls complained about lunch that they were having at home. And their mother, Florence, said, they could have lunch at school. And the girls answered, we've done that before, which was not true of the twins, but it would have been true of Joanna and Jacqueline. Now, John would say that when the twins would discuss the accident between themselves, they often spoke in the present tense. Hmm. And they seemed to be uh, reliving it. And Jillian liked to mother Jennifer, kind of the way Joanna liked to mother Jacqueline. The twins looked to the grandmother for mothering, even though Florence was available to to uh, to give that parent mother um, role because she was no longer uh, working um, with the with their business. Another thing, the twins, much like. Joanna and Jacqueline liked to comb hair, especially their father's hair. Jillian was a lot more um, social uh, with people. She also showed the same interest in costumes and acting um, like Joanna had. She also seemed more mature than her twin sister. The girls, the twins, had phobias related to cars. They would be very careful crossing streets they would often hold their mother's hand. There was one occasion that the parents noticed the girls cringe um, in terror um, and cling to each other because a car engine started near them in an enclosed alleyway. And at the time of Joanna and Jacqueline's death, Jacqueline was still learnt, hold on a minute. So they cringed in fear um, and held on to each other um, after they heard this car um, and the sound of it. Joanna and Jacqueline's death, Jacqueline was still learning to write. And her teacher was concerned that she was still holding the pencil upright um, in her fist. When Jillian and Jennifer began learning to write at age four, Jillian immediately held the pencil properly while Jennifer held it upright in her fist at age seven that she began holding it properly. Um, so physically, Joanna was slender of build as was Jillian. Jennifer's stocky build matched Jacqueline's and Joanna had a splay footed gait um, than Jacqueline did. At birth, a dark brown roundish, roundish birthmark was observed on the left side of Jennifer's waist, the same spot where there had been a similar mark on Jacqueline's. A, mar a birthmark corresponding with a past life scar, such as that on uh, Jennifer's forehead, um, that corresponded to the scar from Jacqueline's bucket accident is rare in reincarnation. Um, cases and what is more frequent are wounds that replicate are replicated in reincarnation as birthmarks that cause the person's death. Florence um, has said that the mark was slightly depressed when uh, Jennifer was born and showed up more during cold weather as well. Um, the case as well as the case with uh, Jacqueline Scar. Um, no, no one else in the family had similar birthmarks. So I guess that's why it's uh, pretty unique. All of this brought the attention um, to 
um, Ian Stevenson, who investigated the case after he learned about it through a newspaper coverage in 1963. Um, the same year when the twins turned four, the same year that they turned four, Ian Stevenson came to the family's home um, and he interviewed John and Florence at length and examined the girls' birthmarks. Um, he would again meet the family in 1967 and then corresponded with them until he next visited them in 1978 when Jillian and Jennifer were 20. At this point, he had Jillian and Jennifer's, um, their blood uh, tested. Um, and he did tests and to determine their zygosity, I guess it's zygosity, I guess you call it. It's to know if they're identical or fraternal. So if they came from one egg or two different eggs. Um, he found that they were mono, uh, mono zygotic, zygotic, I guess is how you say it. Excuse me if I'm saying that wrong, um, which is they're identical. So they were born from the same egg. Sadly, Florence died in 1979 and Steven Stevenson visited John and his new wife as well as Jillian in 1982. Stevenson, Ian Stevenson, would continue to correspond with John until his death in 1985. And Steven um, has written um, his case report. Um, he wrote a book about it. Stevenson notes that since the twins were mono um, zygotic, which would be from one egg, um, they're identical genetically. So genetics can't explain uh, Jacqueline uh, or explain Jennifer's birthmarks. Stevenson doubts whether maternal impression, psychic influence of the mother on the unborn child. He didn't believe that, uh, especially because For Florence didn't believe in reincarnation. And she so he speculates about the paternal impression of John um, as an alternative to reincarnation. Stevenson finds um, that it is inconceivable conceivable that John and Florence could have molded the behaviors of their twin daughters uh, to exactly match their, their um, to match Joanna and Jacqueline. He finds that very unlikely. As the twins grew older after the age of seven, they basically have no, they forgot about their past life memories. So after age seven, they really didn't have any other um, memories uh, to share. So, during the early years, John refrained from referring to their statements about what they remembered. So he didn't discuss it once they forgot and didn't, he, he didn't discuss it with them. Um, and he didn't discuss his belief in reincarnation as well. Uh, so, and the girls didn't really um, learn about reincarnation until the age of 13. So, the Polly case is one of several discussed by a British historian, Ian Wilson, and he is very skeptical, um, broadly skeptical cr critic, basically. And he knows that the case is evidentially weak and the only witnesses to the statements were Florence and John. Um, and also because John believed in reincarnation. John could not Basically, he does. John couldn't be unbiased because he believed in it so much, is what they're say. What he was saying. Um, since the two pairs of daughters were in the same family, knowledge of the older sisters might have been available to the twins through normal means, um, as an uh, as an alternative explanation. Wilson proposes maternal impression, and he writes that it can it can scarcely be doubted that during her pregnancy with the twins Florence must have replayed in her mind the events of the life and death of her 
earlier daughters. Um, he does concede that other cases investigated by Stevenson cannot be explained. So the other ones that Stevenson wrote in his book, he he can't explain the you know he can't uh, he. He can't deny those. He can't explain those. With the reincarnation cases, they're born into different families and it's not, they're not in the same exact family um, that the Pollock t twins, uh, what happened with the Pollock twins. Then there's Richard Rockley writing for the website Skeptic Report. And he suggests that uh, John Pollock, since he believed in reincarnation, most likely talked, um, most likely talked about his belief that the twins were reincarnations of their sisters in their presence. Plus other family and friends might have talked about the accident and their deaths. He also says um, that the parents could be reading too much into the twin statements or could be lying. But at that young of an age be lying? I mean, maybe they overheard conversations. I don't know, but I don't know at that young of an age they would lie about it or or maybe he means the parents lied about it I don't know but I just I, I find that I find that really hard to believe honestly he notes that marks that match past life birthmarks scars or even wounds which none of Rockley's theories would explain are not found are not found only in the Pollock case but in a high uh proportion of reincarnation cases. Mild Edward Allen notes that some critics have dismissed the case based solely on John Pollock's belief in reincarnation. So because he believed that they feel like, forget it, like because of that, he had to have some influence on the girls and the story, but what they're, um, because he couldn't have been unbiased. Um, but then Alan points out that Florence did not, she didn't believe in uh, reincarnation. And her uh, version of events is are virtually the same as John's. And John had responded uh, to a journalist uh, once with the same comment, If and I quote, if I had not believed in reincarnation, he would not, I would not have shared with other interested people the observations about Jillian and Jennifer um, that he, that he, uh, unquote, and that's what Flor that he and Florence had made. There would almost have been no case or nothing. So if Florence and John didn't relay what they heard or saw, there would be no case virtually. In the end, um, Stevenson, um, basically believes he wrote the book and he believes that the Pollock twins are reincarnated of their older sisters who passed away in a freak car accident. Reincarnation is just so hard. Um, like I said, I was raised Catholic and Catholics don't believe in reincarnation. Well, you know, priests, so forth. And there's just some fascinating stories that I have read about reincarnation that makes me think, you know, is it is it a coincidence? And I, I mean, for the most part, you know, the Pollock twins, especially the way it intrigued me was the fact that they were basically born into the same family. And that's the thing that really intrigued me because usually you don't hear that. They were born into a whole completely different uh, family and they had totally um, no no connection to the family that you know they were in before they were reincarnated so that part really you know interested me why they would have been born into the same family so it makes me believe I don't know but I keep an open mind and that's the thing you know hearing you know the point that like there were things like, how would they have known that? And the only way would have been if the parents like told them this stuff. And I just, I don't, I don't, I don't think they would, but you know, I didn't know them personally, so I can't say that. Um, I would think it would pretty be pretty sad if they did. Uh, but how do you, how do you then disregard the physical 
um, aspect of the twins and their older sisters being so um, relatable or so close, you know, the scar and the birthmark. And how do you, how do you um, explain that, you know, their appearance and their one, you know, was stockier than the other or one you know the way they held the pencil was the same way and then when they turned seven miraculously they stopped holding it that way which because that because she didn't let Jacqueline didn't live past seven you know so and so that's why I was like okay so after the age of seven basically they had no memories of their past life they didn't talk about it anymore they didn't have any other information and they lived normal lives, you know, that I read. So very interesting story. Tell me what you think, in your opinion, do you believe in reincarnation? Do you, in the comments below, do you believe in reincarnation? Do you believe the Pollock twins are a um, testimony to reincarnation? Do you believe they were reincarnated um, of their older sisters? Any stories to discuss about reincarnation firsthand? Uh, so comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. It helps me out. If you are subscribed to my channel, I thank you for your love and support. If you are not subscribed to my channel, will you please consider subscribing? And I will see you in the next one. Take care.